Yep. Okay, everyone. Okay, good. All right. Welcome to Six Scales. This is September twenty first. Okay. Um. So one of the first items was um. This actually. So this is this is these items actually have been carried out for a little while since this is our first meeting of about three weeks. Um, I added this a little while ago. Um, this uh, I came across this PR, and um, essentially what it is, it has to do with um, adding a status on the VMI spec uh, that will assist with live migration. And um, so I left a comment on here that there's a I, I can kind of see it here. Basically, we it's a field that we'd upgrade, we, we'd update pretty frequently on the VMI spec. And um, so there's been some discussion about this and I, I left a comment at this and talked to Vladek about this. Um, and, and they're aware, like there, there's some challenges here, like we're gonna, we would, we would really, if we had this PR, it would really increase the number of update calls or the number of patch calls to the VMI. Um, so there's a, there is an alternate approach that Roman proposed um, instead of going this route where what we can do is um, use, um, so there's, so the way it's described to me is like we can, the way the metrics are reported right now in, in um, Kubernetes is pretty much everything goes through Prometheus. But uh, there's, I guess, some proposal out there that will allow the user to change how metrics are reported so that it doesn't necessarily go through Prometheus, that it would go, that we can send it through some other different places. So in other words, like we can have some sort of single signal handling that's that's um, kind of like in the form of metrics, which is essentially what this is, and um, have something listening off of the end of it. So instead of just Prometheus. So in other words, like we could send this to Prometheus and read Prometheus, but that's not what we want. We instead would rather just have this messages be these metrics be sent out, and we'd like something else that we write to be listening for the whatever these formatted metrics, and then so we can have some tool that that does something with it. So that was basically the suggestion that Roman had in here. Um, so that would be instead of having the a bunch of objects or a bunch of um, fields that we update on the spec. So I think we're this isn't going to be implemented this way, but we'll. We'll have to just keep an eye on the PR. I don't think that's going to be the case. Hey, Dan, um, thanks for walking through that PR. It's an interesting problem. Um, do you, I, I wonder what are the consumers of that information? Uh, this information, so it should just be, um, so like when you do live migration, it's like when, um, or one of the challenges. So what the, the, I guess the use case here is, Live migration works in a lot of cases, but there are some cases it doesn't work. And um, the the, ra the reason it doesn't work in some cases, or it doesn't make sense even, is because there is a lot of activity on, on the VM. It's writing a lot to disk or to memory or something to a point that um, that doing the live migration would be extremely challenging because we, we, we right, we think about it, we have, to, we have to take the data, it has to be, um, it has to, have the same, the the new VM and the old VM have to have like the, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna pick up all the, the writes to disk and things like that um, and start executing on the new, on the new VMI. But the challenge is if we're doing so much work on the old, on the mm -hmm. old VMI, on, like it's, it's writing a lot to disk or something, then it's really difficult to then do the live migration. So the whole idea is like, this is a metric to say like, okay, this VMI is going to have a really hard time doing live migration, right? Because we've got a high dirty rate or whatever. This one will have an easy time because we're not actually doing a whole lot of things. We're not writing a lot to disk. It won't have a whole hard time moving to the um, live, migrating, live migrating and moving to the new VMI. So that's the, that's the background for this. And so the user would be if I wanted to migrate all of my VMs in my zone, I think what Vladek said it was for upgrade, for upgrading things. If I wanted to migrate them all, we want to increase the chance of success. And so for the ones like we'd have this metric, we can figure out all the ones that we can, that we'll be successful with. And then I'm not sure how we'd handle this. Like, I think maybe we need user intervention or something when we have 
VMs that are really hot and we don't want to migrate them right now. I'm not sure what we do, but the whole idea is that we'd identify them. I see. I see. Okay. Makes sense. So basically you need an API, which an agent who is live migrating all VMs can, can query and look at the current state of VMIs and decide which ones can be migrated and which ones are risky. Yeah, um, that's right. The proposed API is the status field of VMI. That's okay. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the problem I see with this is it can cause like cause like a watch storm. So because this is an update in the status field, that means any controller that is watching the VMI will always um, get an update event and trigger a reconcile uh, for it. So um, yeah, I, I understand this is going to be very hard to scale. Yep. Um, so the, hopefully the solution that I mentioned is going to be what is, is going to be the path forward and not the something on the status field. Uh, unfortunately, I don't fully understand it because I don't, at least I haven't read anything about it. Like I don't, but um, Roman's comment somewhere in here, I think it was, um, I don't know which one, but um, somewhere in here, he made that recommendation. Um, I don't see it, but that was, um, but that, that was, that I think is the path that this is going to go is that they're going to um, try and find some sort of other signaling outside of this. So sort of, I guess you could say some sort of API outside of this, um, but not like some sort of CRD, but we use, since this is essentially a metric, use the metric system, not Prometheus, but like some other way of signaling like a metric and then have something scrape it, some sort of agent or something. So I don't know, I but as far as I'm concerned, like the, um, as long as we don't go this route, then I, I don't think it'll be any concerns for us on the scale side. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Cool. All right. So nothing with this. I think we'll skip this. We'll, we'll do this later. Um, let's go to Jed's question. Uh, I'm currently trying to get better understanding of our rate limiting metric exposed queues in the bird controller controllers like watch migration. Uh, please grab our Kubert work through depth, expecting values to go up from creating tons of concurrent VMs, but they rarely do. Anyway, if uh, someone knows this, okay. Uh, I think so. I think the answer to this is the um, the work cube depth is going to only go up when our reconcile takes too much time. So, I mean, in theory, the the number of queues can go up if we run into a lot of um, doing a lot of work, but it's not only dependent on the amount of work we do. It's much larger than that. It's like our work because we're calling Kubernetes, we're calling lots of other things in Kubert. It would take um, something in that in that chain of events to be slow, um, and then some retries to happen, and then for us to then build up a work queue. So it would, I think, it would be a bunch of things that would need to happen, not just tons of concurrent VMs and migrations. So I don't know, we can, I can let Chad know, I guess, well, we can talk to him on Slack about that one. Looks like uh, there was a bug I, about this. I think there is one more thing around this. So the work cube matrix are exposed by underlying client Go as well. And they are not uh, prefixed with cube word underscore. So might be worth checking those as well. Oh, you think, um, oh, oh, check those in addition, you mean? Yes, okay. because um, we use client go, right? So client go yeah. uh, also exports those metrics. Okay. So here's the bug. Queuing multiple VM migration causes work controller to hit a deadlock. Large scale setup on 32 nodes. 6,000 VMs, testing VM migration blocks, schedule hundreds of VM migrations, wait for completion, 
and then schedule another 100. Migration pace was slowly degrading with every bulk, starting with 20 seconds and reaching 15 70 seconds for the last bulks. In order to debug this, I scheduled 800 VM migrations and so it'd be easier to notice the root cause. Okay. Get stuck in the vert controller migration queue. Making sure the for automation of the number of scheduling my migrating VM queue will always be less than the parallel migration across the region. So I was able to complete 200 VMs in just about 12 minutes. Parallel migrations per cluster. I don't know what this is. Is this some variable that we have somewhere in Kubert? Go here. We'll do a quick search. I have no idea what this is. Parallel migrations per cluster. This is total number of concurrent live migrations allowed per cluster live. Okay, default to five. So there's a relation. So what he's saying is there's a relationship between. Where is it? It's, it's less than the, oh, here we go. Void triggering this issue is making sure that the through automation that the number of scheduled migrating VMs, VM queued, VMs queued will always be less than parallel migrations per cluster. Hmm, okay. If this thing we gotta look at, I don't know what I don't know what this does. Like I know I understand what the variable is saying here, but I don't know how this affects the the total number of concurrent live migration allowed cluster wide. The number of scheduling migration VMQs will always be. Was slowly degrading. Oh, so I think it must be their um testing automation so my what i'm understanding is that they have a test mechanism where they schedule n number of um, vms for migration so if they start with 100 um, vms being migrated then um, the, you know the result is that first line but if they schedule say five and the default is five, then they are able to make it work. Yeah. I guess that makes sense though, right? Because so we're doing five at a time here, or maybe it does, I don't know. So like you do five at a time and then and then it's queuing 95 of them. Yeah, yep. And then, but I guess maybe where this is confusing to the users like that all of these, 95s are being are taking a long time and the but whereas if they just did five at a time and wait till each of them finished it'd be much faster overall maybe that's the surprising piece where it's like this is consuming memory i think he's got it somewhere in here yeah and also they are getting stuck in the queue so the 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 user expects that the ninety five will then uh, be slotted. So five five five, you go for twenty such rounds and yeah. uh, you get done with it. But they're saying it gets stuck. All the queues got stuck in word controller. So, oh, oh I wonder I if this. Uh... So seconds per VM and last bulk. And it'll be easier to notice the Is there any sort of I don't know if there's any sort of like um we would see this, wouldn't we? Like I think so he's saying so what is that Jed was saying that he didn't see it in the work Hubert work you depth. But maybe it's not so this is what you were saying, it might not be might just be in the work you depth 
from client go that has this. And maybe we're not looking in the right work queue. Yeah, I'm not sure where these get stuck, like where what where they end up getting queued up in. I guess it's, so he's claiming it's the vert controller. Okay, so I guess there's an open question. I don't also understand this behavior like five. So it also, I think that's another thing. It's like the behavior doesn't seem right in that like we should be, we should be taking things whenever there's one of these one spot free in the parallel migrations per cluster, it should be freed up. Uh, we should take another one, I guess. Maybe that's not the maybe that's not the point. Is that maybe what's happening is um, so parallel migrations per cluster. So it's doing five migrations in at the same time. It's got a maybe these are all getting processed one at a time. Maybe the ninety five ones are. That'd be weird, but maybe that's what maybe that's what's happening. Yeah. I think what I'm understanding is that, so I don't know if this is possible, but that there will be 95 of them in the queue, right? And for some reason, they are creating, like they are exhausting the queue from constant uh, updates. So like none of them will, will get uh, processed. I don't know if that's what, is happening so while the five are being migrated the 95 could you know continue to requeue and cause uh watch queue exhaustion i don't know if that's happening here hmm. the vert controller queue size right did they say that there is a vert controller was the vert controller queue Let me see if I can even load this. Oh, there you go. Oh, so they have one here. We're queued up. Yeah, okay. So this is this is okay. So it all gets just gets loaded in the queue. Okay. <laughs> I don't, maybe this isn't the first control IQ, maybe this is something, I, I don't know. But that's, um, okay, so that means then the, we're, we're stuck in the queue, some queue, I don't know what, but we're stuck in some queue, I guess, the work controller queue. And it's just slowly, slowly processes it, okay. So I guess then the thing we're missing is like, what is like, um, why is it that when, I guess the thing I'd wonder is like, if you increase this to 800, you know, like what would, what would happen? Or a thousand, you increase this to a thousand, I wonder what would happen. Yeah. This is where I don't know how this, I don't know how this works. So I don't know what that would do. But... Yeah. I'll try to take a look at uh, the work queue and see if, um, what we are doing is similar to client go or not. That's interesting. Okay. All right, let me leave a note in there. So let me see. So we can, um, I guess the question is, all right, I'll leave the question here a little bit. We can, we just, we'll see it. So what happens when Yeah, I guess that would be the question. Okay. I'll just message Jed on Slack and so we can we can correspond with him that way and 
maybe if you find anything on the work controller queue, maybe we can also let it know. I'll, I'll tag you on the thread away and we can, we'll just go that way. Go about it that yeah. way. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Is there anything else? Did we, uh, let me check our post v one tracking. Did we have, um, is everything merge here? Like, is everything all done or did we? Okay. No, Sell some open items. Oh, this is API review. Wait, where's the, oh, this one. This one what? Okay, these are all still open. Do we need to have like um, Daniel take a look at some of these or Lugo help us um, with some of these? So Lugo was helping out with one, um, with the thing that we need next, the updating of graph, but it has fallen off uh, the burner. So, okay. Maybe we need to ping Lugo again. Which one is it? Is it like, um, uh, it's the need a post submit job for performance bank mark two nine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, this is the same. Okay. Got it. All right. All right. Let me start two threads. Let me just ping Lubo and see where he is. And then um, start a thread with Jed and see if we can get some more info about this book. Yeah. Okay. There is also an open PR. Oh, there is. What's the what's the open PR? I mean, is it uh, if you look at uh, the the work in progress one, uh, which is it? Let, let me let me take it up. Oh. It actually got dropped. Okay, here. Um, 2931. What, uh, is it in Project Infra? Yes. This one. Yep. Okay. All right, I'm gonna tag us over to see what this is. Yeah, we so that's the PR. It has been a while and it's a small one. So um I'll try to ping Lubo again if he gets time for this. If not, maybe I can help out. I'll push changes to that PR. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, all right. you can ping Lubo then and let's see if we can um see if we can get this further. Yeah, I thought we were close because I thought like we had um I thought you had like most of this like already stamped yeah. out. Yeah, so I think Lugo ran into one issue, which was um so the PR here creates a post submit job, right? So um our current automation scrapes the metrics, puts it in a CI benchmarks repository. Then this job gets triggered because it's a post submit job. So it will generate the yeah, uh, HTML. And again, uh, post it to GitHub, right? So the issue was that because this was a post submit job, it would always um, recursively invoke itself, um, creating a problem. So Lubo was wondering if we can instead create like a pre-submit job, but one day after, after the scraping is done. I see, okay. Yeah, that's okay. where we were at last. So we need to figure that out. Uh, I think it's okay to do a pre-submit, right? Uh, just the day after. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We don't need to be like, these things are, we don't need to be the day. Yeah, like it, it's okay. Yeah, that should work fine. Okay, cool. All right, well, you can start a thread with them. Let's see if we can get this going again. I mean, it sounds like we've already, it sounds like it's pretty, like we've thought a lot about this and we're pretty close. We just need a little bit more to get it over the finish line. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Thanks, Alay. Um, I think, I think that's all. Let me just move this. Um, sorry, I'm just keeping them tracking. All right. I'm going to mark this one.
Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, I'll lay. I'll move this. We'll just back burner. Um, whenever you have time, we'll talk about this one. Yeah, we'll I keep it around for next time. Any changes on that in next couple of weeks? Um, okay. We blocked with other issues. All right. Okay. I think we're good then. All right. Thanks, Lily. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.